welcome to Pirate News. I'm Christian Gardner. And I'm Liam Ploy. Today we'll give you the latest from across campus, the Tri-State area, and the globe. We'll also have your Seton Hall sports update and your five-day weather forecast for the South Orange area. This past Mother's Day, Seton Hall women's basketball star Andra Espinosa Hunter in help with the Players Health Foundation helped introduce a new micro grant to aid the expenses of sports. On Instagram last week, she spoke how 25% of children ages 6 to 12 years old come from a household that makes less than $25,000 a year. She also noted how the annual cost on average to a play a sport is $693. Now through June 19th, Players Health will help be donating that sum of $693 to 75 different families. To apply, you can go to foundation.playershealth.com. Madeline Field, a student in the Bacino Leadership Institute and a member of the Seton Hall swimming and diving team, has started a sports leadership camp called Pirates Play. Pirates Play is a free sports leadership camp for elementary school students in disadvantaged local areas. Field says that the camp is led completely by Seton Hall athletics and leadership students. The inspiration for this project came from Field's experience as an athlete and volunteer work she did when she was younger. For the second time in five years, the Black Men of Standard have been recognized as the organization of the year. Their continued presence on campus has made them yet again a prominent voice here at the Hall. In their statement following the win, of organiz the organization spoke on the struggles they faced during the COVID year and how happy they are to be recognized once again, along with honoring their past members. Congratulations once again to BMS for continuing to raise the standard. May is Mental Health Awareness Month and the Department of Human Resources partnering with Cigna EAP to present a webinar on mental health. You can make a difference. This webinar will take place on May 11th at 10 a.m. and the webinar will explore how to notice and respond to, stre to stress to support mental wellness, improve your understanding of mental health issues, discuss the actions you can take to provide support to others, and review the, the benefits of the employee assistance program. Now we'll send it over to Jimmy Bliss for your seat and all sports update. Jimmy, how them boys doing? Thanks Christian. Hey Pirates, I'm Jimmy Bliss here with your Seton Hall Sports Update for the final time. The baseball team hosted St. John's Red Storm in a doubleheader on Sunday after their Saturday game was rained out. The Pirates had a valiant effort in Game 1, but their comeback attempt fell just short as they lost 8-6. Game 2 rounded out a St. John's series sweep as Seton Hall was shut out 6-0. Next up for the Hall is Villanova, who come to town this weekend for a three-game series. The softball team traveled to Queens for their final two games of the 2022 season. After being rained out on Saturday, the Hall had a doubleheader against the Red Storm, with each game coming down to the wire. The Pirates took Game 1 with a 5-4 win in extra innings, thanks to a great outing from Shelby Smith, who threw 141 pitches. Game 2 saw Seton Hall take the lead in the top of the 7th off the bat of Taylor Suarez en route to a 4-2 win. Sydney Babbitt pitched seven innings and gave up just two runs, earning her seventh win of the season. They finished the season with a 20-23 record. As for the men's basketball team, they received a pair of big-time transfers this week. Alamir Dawes is taking his talents back home, leaving Clemson, and Femi Odukale will transfer from Pitt. Dawes, a Newark native, is a combo guard who an average 11 points and two assists per game for the Tigers. Odukale is a classic point guard who averaged 11 points, 3 rebounds, and 3 assists per game for the Panthers last season. Both of these men could push for a starting spot next season with the Pirates as Seton Hall is losing multiple guards to graduation and to the transfer portal. That will wrap up your Seton Hall sports update. For one last time, I'm Jimmy Bliss, now sending it back to Christian Gardner and Liam Plate at the desk. Coast Guard authorities say two people were rescued after their sailboat overturned while breaking surf off the Jersey Shore. Officials say the 33-foot sailboat was going towards Atlantic City when it ran aground and began healing over shoals near Little Egg Inlet at about 8 p.m. on Friday. A helicopter and rescue boats responded and found the vessel with both people on board. A rescue swimmer was lowered and helped the two people get away from the overturned vessel and allowed them to be hoisted to safety. Two-thirds of New Jersey has increased to a medium state of COVID transmission. The change in transmission status comes as New Jersey's daily average case counts are on the rise. Seven-day average for confirmed COVID cases was up 24% from last week and up 124% from a month ago. The CDC says there is no mask advisory for residents living in low or medium transmission areas if they are not at high risk of serious illness. Levels are calculated based on admissions to hospitals and the percent of inpatient beds used by COVID patients. With the rolling back of mask mandates across the state, 
counties, including Essex County, have moved to a medium state of transmission. Time will tell if numbers will continue to rise. Now we'll send it over to Melania Glutch with your five-day weather forecast. How are things looking, Mel? Thanks, Liam. I'm your weather anchor, Melania Glutch, here with your five-day weather forecast for the South Orange area. Today we can expect partly cloudy skies with a high of 72 and a low of 48. Tomorrow it is going to be mostly sunny with a high of 73 and a low of 52. On Thursday we will have more partly cloudy skies with a high of 74 and a low of 57. Prepare for plenty of rain this weekend as there will be scattered showers on Friday with a high of 71 and a low of 62. Showers will continue into Saturday with a high of 73 and a low of 61. That will wrap up your five-day weather forecast for the South Orange area. Once again, I'm Melania Glutch. Now let's go back to the desk for more news from across the country. President Joe Biden announced yesterday that 20 internet companies have agreed to provide discount service to people with low incomes through a program that could effectively make millions of households eligible for free Wi-Fi service through an already existing federal subsidy. Biden said, quote, high-speed internet is not a luxury any longer, it's a necessity, unquote. The $1 trillion infrastructure package passed by Congress last year, $14.2 billion of those dollars are, are set to fund the Affordable Connectivity Program, which provides $30 subsidies on internet service for millions of low-income households. Protests and rallies are sparking across the nation in support of abortion rights. As Politico reported last week about the Supreme Court opinion to overturn the 1973 Roe v. Wade case, many Americans are voicing their opposition of the possible decision. Thousands in Texas' largest city of Houston joined governor candidate Beto O'Rourke in downtown Park. In Chicago, also saw over a thousand demonstrators. More demonstrations are expected this Saturday, including at Union Square in New York City, across the globe as well. That's going to do it for this year of Pirate News. I've been Christian Gardner, and it's going to wrap up a career for ourselves here at Pirate TV. So for the last time for myself, this has been a, a pleasure to be here with you, Liam, and everyone here in the studio over these past four years and uh, look back on it fondly. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's been an honor to bring the news to all our viewers over the past four years and we don't want to go out at the desk with anyone else by my side, Christian. So for the last time, we'll see you soon.